Every company needs capital, don't they, Ted, in order to run their company. And that means that sometimes they have to go for crowdfunding to raise that capital. So now we're going to find out from Ian about how his Cedar campaign is going and what he's going to do with the money. Now, I understand that congratulations are in order because uh, you've just secured uh, Cedar funding in a ridic ridiculously short period of time, right? Yeah. So how long did it take to actually raise the, uh, the capital that you were looking for and how much was it? So we are currently listed on the Cedars Equity Crowdfunding platform. We uh, set a target for half a million, um, so to raise finance for our own business to to grow the to grow our solution and platform and user base. And we we hit our target within two days. So we were just amazed at the response. We have a very active user base of investors. We have a great community who you know following us for the last couple of years and uh, I've, I've invested in the business so we're, we're very thankful for all the support and uh, yeah it's great uh, it's great validation that uh, people believe what we believe so we're, uh, we're we're absolutely thrilled with that so now you've got the cash um what is it that you're going to do with it because you've already built this platform um but presumably you've got some kind of vision of where it's going Sure. I mean, our vision's always stayed quite consistent from the start, and that is to build a fully functioning aggregation platform for the peer-to-peer -peer lending market to allow more people to access this you know, attractive asset class that we fundamentally believe in. Um, so almost like the Hargreaves Lansdowne of peer-to-peer -peer lending, where people can build and manage their portfolio themselves. So we've lower fees, right, than Hargreaves Lansdowne? Yeah, <laughs> relatively speaking. The more the more investors we can get on our platform, the lower we'll bring our fees down. Um, and, and what is it that you're building? I mean, at the moment you offer these kind of um, this kind of service where you compare and you do a huge amount of research, I believe, into yeah. each of the into each of the individual platforms, and you make that available to your investors, which is an incredibly valuable uh, service. Sure. So will you extend that perhaps to other countries or, or yeah. are there any plans to go international? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the way we see with the research, we're doing the due diligence on the platforms. We might as well make it available to the investors themselves. So we put that on our website free, uh, free of charge. Um, the way that we are going to evolve the platform, we uh, want to integrate with more link lenders. We'll have more choice for the investor, allow investors to you know, build their own portfolio, give increased functionality. We're also uh, investigating how we can wrap the product in an ISA as well. So that is a big focus for us at the moment. And essentially with the innovative finance ISA, which was designed really for peer-to-peer -peer lending or you know, debt-based securities, um, one of the issues is that you can only hold one ISA, one type of ISA, uh, and, a, and a given tax year, and that ties the investor to specific peer-to-peer -peer platforms. So a funding circle ISA, you can only invest through funding circle, a Zopa ISA, you can only invest through Zopa. So what we are trying to do is wrap our platform in an ISA so people can you know, manage a portfolio. And we think that's quite attractive. So that's where we're hoping to, hoping to go with the, the platform in the UK and US. Um, Interestingly, yeah, we're seeing a lot of um, appetite from European investors. So European investors investing in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, assets in the UK. In fact, on our Cedars campaign, you know, thirty percent of the investors were actually European. From so, well, that's we, surprising. Surprising. As, yeah, I mean, it was a great response. It was just brilliant. So uh, we see a big opportunity there, and we're we're developing services for that market as well. And we also talk with a lot of European lenders as well. So can we offer European lenders onto the UK, uh, onto UK investors? Well, that would be interesting because that would provide more diversification, I bet. And uh, final question, do you think there'll ever be something like an exchange traded fund, which contains um, peer to peer inside it? Would it be packaged that way? So it can be traded on exchange in a liquid form? So there are a number of investment trusts 
that um, hold peer-to-peer -peer assets inside them, so P2P Global Investments and even Funded Circle uh, SME Income Fund. So there's a number of investment trusts, but they're more traditional kind of vehicles that have the fees kind of attached to them. So would you have an ETF uh, with peer-to-peer -peer assets? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think we would need to speak to somebody at Morgan Stanley or somebody who's building ETFs. I'm sure they would love to speak to you. Yeah. Well, I know some people. Just, uh, just call me, mate. Right. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's a, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. The only thing that we would say with that is you lose the benefit of non-correlation to the market. So if you take PP Global Investments, for example, you know, it's performing at quite a substantial discount to NAV at the moment, whereas the underlying assets, you know, they're not sitting on the market, shouldn't be really affected, you know, we would say by that kind of, that kind of behavior. It just adds another element for the investor to understand. And dare I say it, will artificial intelligence ever be involved in peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning? So, for example, could it winnow out the bad loans, maybe the bad platforms, and also combine the, combine the um, individual platforms in a more optimal way? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't see any reason why not. The, the key question there is, the, you know, can we get the data to perform uh, any kind of level of analysis to that level so and i believe that you probably can as long as you can get the platforms to either play ball or to um to build up the data yourself so for example um you know as you as you invest on these on these platforms or as you collect uh, data on investments you know you can see the returns you can see the type of defaults you can see the sectors that the defaults are an example of that would be you know my accent i'm scottish default rates are actually higher in Scotland, uh, statistically proven. So should people invest and uh, lend money to Scottish borrowers? Well, you know, there's, there's certain things that you could do with AI to select loans, but it's all about, you know, can you get the data? Can you get the API connections to boot trades or, um, or to invest in the loans? And I think we're probably a while off that at the moment. Okay, well, that's been uh, really interesting. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and I hope we speak again once you start to launch some of these new products. Yeah, absolutely. More than, I would love to come back and uh, always keen to talk about peer-to-peer -peer lending. So I'd love to be invited back. So raising half a million in two days shows that a lot of people believe in the Orca platform and they're willing to put their money where their mouth is. And hopefully we'll see some of those new developments soon. But of course, in our channel, we're much more modest in our requirements. For just $5 a month, you can support us on Patreon, and then you get to take part in our live Q&A sessions, and you get to join our Slack channel and ask me a question any time of day or night. So hopefully you'll join us on those weekly Q&A sessions, and we'd really appreciate your support. Thank you for listening.